Ciao guys, I'm Fudier, so in this video I want to explain you a little better the screen of the new Samsung Odyssey Plus because even with the True Lenses video, that by the way you can find in the description below or in the card over here, sometimes it doesn't really pass the message of what you really see with your eyes and not with the lens of the camera. So I want to describe and go a little more in depth about the screen to give my impression, of course, just on the screen standpoint, so you can understand if this is the new headset right for you or if just another headset to leave on the shelves until the next generation of VR kicks off and, uh, you know, fun stuff will happen. But until then, let's explain the screen and let's understand if this is the right for you. Okay, so let's start talking about the lenses. These are Fresnel lenses, so the usual lenses that we have on pretty much all the other consumer VR headset on the market. What you're gonna have with those, you're gonna have God rays that in this case are not so much, but are not small, so are shorter than usual, but those are there. God rays is when you have a white image in a black background and creates like a ray of light. If you're used to the Oculus Rift, well, you're used to pretty much everything. So with these, you're gonna expect just a better situation. Those are not major, but they're still there. So we have to point it out for sure. Also, there is some distortion on the top and on the bottom where you lose a lot of clarity and it's very hard to read on those part of the lenses. The best way to go against that is to be very, very close to the lenses, but it's the device itself with the strap design that doesn't allow you to do that. You can change, of course, the face cushion with something from VR cover maybe when it's gonna come out. For now, I'm using the Oculus VR cover that are very, very slim, but I have a lot of light bleeding instead of that. So I don't know if it's a good idea, but I really prefer to have much clarity than light bleeding for now. Talking about the sweet spot, it's not super small, it's not super big as well. A very good example for a good sweet spot is the Oculus Go, where you don't even need an IPD adjustment. With this one, on the horizontal part, you're not gonna have many problem for the sweet spot, but on the vertical part, you really have to pick the right spot in between and because the strap design as you can see the headset wobble a lot i'm not gonna say that it's easy to lose it but i will also say that it's not super hard to lose the sweet spot while you're playing overall we we'll say these are not the best lenses on the market we seem better than these but they're not the worst either so much better in some time than the vive pro but still they, they could be fixed and we have the same of the last generation. So, you know, something that you have to be aware of. Talking then about the FOV is 110 degrees. So as any other VR headset, so nothing changing there. You're not gonna expect a wider FOV. You can increase it a little if you get very close to the lenses. And I said before, not just the sweet spot, but it's very hard right now. So as you buy, it will be 110 degrees and that's it. Then talking about the resolution, we have a 1440 by 1600 AMOLED display. This is the same display of the first generation and also the same display that we have on the 5 Pro. So nothing new is there. What we have is the anti-STE technology, the anti-screen door effect technology. What does it mean? Well, this new technology is supposed to take read, of course, of the lines in between the pixel, the black space in between the pixel, and uh, lit it up and make it harder to see and harder to be distracted by it. Because we had many examples with all that set where the resolution was pretty low, and so it was very easy to focus directly, not on the game itself, but actually on this kind of grid and that takes out a lot of immersion. So of course, it's something that the VR market is trying to take rid of. In this case, what they're using is a filter in front of the screen. What this filter does is actually bounce the light from the pixel to the other, filling the little gap in between. So you're not gonna see the black line directly, but you're gonna see like a kind of a shade of the colors there is close by. It will look like a bleeding of light directly. It's not gonna look so dark. What is the effect that you have inside 
is a kind of a canvas effect which looks like everything like a paint, everything is softer and the edges are not so jagged anymore. We have to say also that this panel is a diagonal pixel arrangement so you're gonna see jagged edges more in the writing that are straight instead of the one that are diagonal. But because of this technology for the anti-STE effect, it's like if you're gonna have like an anti-aliasing every time on. Now, some people will like it, some people not. Uh, this is not really the point. What we have to say though, is the resolution is the same as the Vive Pro and the original Odyssey. So the readability, it will be pretty much the same. What's different is that when it's really at the edge of the readability, it's gonna be like a smooth and um, not really a readable text instead of very jagged and pixel over there, they're not readable anymore. Such a different, not really. But when you have something that is not to read, so you don't really use the resolution, but what you are looking at is just the environment, just the what you're looking for the immersion in VR, well, this device, this kind of technology give you a big edge over the first generation. Why? Because you don't have jack edges, everything looks more real. I will not say blur because yes, it could be blur a little, but it's softer. You don't really see all those pixelated edges that you usually see on all the other devices. Now, are you gonna be able to spot enemies farther and farther away or like a plane and DCS like um, around or everything like from Pavlov to War Dust to take a shot as a sniper? No, it's not gonna change much. Be aware, the resolution is exactly the same, so you're not gonna have a difference that. The difference you're gonna have is really how the image will look to your eyes. With this, will look more natural, softer. With the other one, will look just shag edges or literally pixels, little squares over there. I have to say though that even if you have the same panel, with this kind of technology, you lose not just a little of clarity, but you'll also lose brightness and color. The screen is not gonna be as bright as the Vive Pro, it's not gonna be as bright as the original Odyssey, and the colors are not gonna be so vivid. But I don't take it really like a bad thing, because at the end of the day, the AMOLED display are very famous to have a saturated and over vibrant colors. And with this, everything looks a little more natural in a way. I want to share something that for me was very interesting because usually I play a lot in VR. So I don't have any more the moment when you get out and you say like, oh, okay, I'm back in reality. Well, this until I try this headset over here for some reason, because of the resolution that is actually better anyway than the original Vive or the Oculus and maybe because of this color they're not as vibrant, maybe because the screen door effect is barely noticeable, so it looks like if you have a different vision, a canvas, like a kind of a not super good glasses on. Well, when I got out, I got this impression of like, wow, I'm back in reality again, that I was missing for pretty long being like a unusual daily driver VR user. I have to say also that watching movies in big screen is much more enjoyable with this headset than all the others. Probably it's very comparable to the experience that you will have on the Oculus Go, where you have an RGB arrangement and uh, the screen door effect is very blended in the image. So you're gonna have a similar theme, but of course with better color and better brightness overall. So what I think about this screen, I think this is a great screen actually. I really, really enjoy it and it's growing on me. Like before, when I got in the first time, I didn't have the wow effect. I wasn't like, wow, this is the future. No, not at all. Actually, I was pretty concerned about this screen. I was like, oh, is this good? It's like, should it be better? But then I kind of got used to it. And after like a week now that I'm using it, well, I started to like think like, wow, I can't really go back. And when I made the True the Lenses video and I had to put on the Lenovo, I had to put on the Vive Pro and soon I'm gonna do it with the Vive and the Oculus as well. So uh, subscribe for that so you don't miss it. Well, I had the moment or like, oh crap, there's a lot of screen door effect. Those screen door effect that I, I've never bothered about. I'm not a person that really like 
as is bothered by the screen door effect. I also put the pancake lenses on the regular Vive, so I have a lot of clarity, but that grid is like awful, like in a little danger sometime. Your eyes just cross because you kind of focus easier on the grid than on the game itself. But in this case, I was like, wow, this worked. This is something that is really useful. That's something that you should take in consideration because it's not as bad as people think. Because at the end, yes, you lose some clarity, but you are starting not from the clarity than the Vive or, or the clarity of the Oculus. You're starting from the clarity of the Vive Pro or the first generation, where the resolution is high enough that even with the AEA, with, even with the anti-aliasing on top, well, you still have a good image. But anyway, that's really up to you. What do you prefer? Do you prefer clarity? Do you prefer a jack edges? Do you put the AA on in your games? Well, probably this is not the right for you. And probably you should go for the first generation of the Odyssey that is even cheaper. And I wanna do a video about this or the other anyway, very, very soon or go for the Vive Pro if you want also the best tracking out there in the market. But instead, if you want just some more realistic images, you wanna enjoy a little more and watch more movies maybe, and just have a soft image in front of you that doesn't feel like you're wearing a screen every time, well, this is a great solution. This filter over here is not so bad. Probably you are spoiled, but as I was saying before, by the Razer OS VR or the Oculus DK2, they were using this technology with very, very low resolution. But I think that right now, we reach a point when using that really can make sense. Anyway guys, this was my rant, my talking about the screen of the new Samsung Odyssey Plus. I'm really, really enjoying it and I hope you're enjoying it as well. And if you're considerate, be aware, you're trading a little clarity for softness and overall more realistic colors. And don't expect, please, to be like so wowed at first when you get inside it. Give it some time, give the time to get used to, and trust me, when you're gonna go back to all the other ads, you're gonna feel the difference right away and miss this guy in just a matter of seconds. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, dislike, subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech and all the content about the Samsung Odyssey Plus coming soon. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.